All right, listen, it's time for you to... Now, before we get ourselves balls deep into this video, I'll tell you what this video is not about. What class to start with, what weapons to use, and where to go first. You've heard of giving a man a fish. Those things are like giving a man a fish. I'm gonna teach you to fish. If you want to get better at Elden Ring, no matter how good you think you are, then stick through this whole video because by the end, you'll have the confidence to overcome any situation. So I'm going to go ahead and do something a little cringe. I'm going to throw a quote up on the video. Most people know this as the 80-20 rule. It applies to basically everything. So for that reason, I'm going to split this video up into three parts. The balls, the shaft, and the head. No, for real. The first part is going to be the big things that you will use 80% of the time. This is where we'll get into general combat, how to approach bosses, and what matters most. The second part is going to be the details that you will use the remaining 20% of the time. This is where we'll get down, dirty, and nerdy with things like stats, weapon scaling, and more. In the third part, I'm just going to splurge all over you. So this is the section with the heavy hitters. Here's the biggest one. When you find yourself struggling with a boss, stop trying to kill and start paying attention. Some people play this game like a seven year old with a two second attention span, sitting in math class right after they just got back from recess. Think of your next attempt as just a try not to die challenge. Completely forget that attacking exists. Remove it from your brain. Now just try to avoid taking damage. Move in and out of the boss's attack range like it's a young Saturday night and pay attention to what attacks they can do and when they can do them. Remember, the boss is not really a big baddie with a monster BBC. They're a dumb loser bot AI and they can only do what From Software designed them to do. Once you're nice and comfy cozy with avoiding damage, start figuring out when you can do damage. You'll know the boss's moves like the back of your nutsack in less time than it takes you to say, Step around, I'm stuck. Soon, you'll be tasting victory like a fresh shot of communal fruit punch at the 6th grade winter ball. Remember how I said the last point was the biggest one? Well, it is, but only when supported by these next two. A dodge happens at button release not button press. If you keep this in mind, it'll be easier to time your dodges. Dodging lets you phase through attacks, so you don't always have to dodge away from the enemy. Dodging towards them, instead, can position you for your next attack. Speaking of attacking, if you want more cheek clapping capability, the best way to improve your damage output is by upgrading your weapon, not by leveling your character. You can upgrade your weapon easily by using the smithing stones found in the mine shafts scattered throughout the map. These orange icons on the map mark the mine shafts. You don't always have to attack the enemy head on, like you're staring down the barrel of a BWC ready to burst. Try crouching and sneaking around. You can backstab enemies for a ton of damage. Or, you can just use the stealth to avoid groups and getting gangbanged like Mia Melkova. If you do happen to get gangbanged though, having a decent health pool helps. Leveling up your health has more value for your runes than any other stat. If your health pool becomes too big for your flasks to fill up, you can upgrade them with the tiers of your enemies. Here's what a church looks like on the map. Most churches have sacred tiers. If you need more flasks, you can use golden seeds, which are found by these cute little baby earth trees. And the final note in this section is that it is possible to encounter enemies or areas that you are simply not supposed to take on yet. Like this big ass tree sentinel. Just leave and then come back. Before we get into this next section, we're going to take a quick break to hear about the sponsor of today's video. It's me. I'm the sponsor of today's video. 
Nobody's going to sponsor some random channel with 100 subscribers. But if you'd like to support me, consider subscribing. 1,000 subs is a huge goal of mine, and I think we could hit it. So many numbers. Well, if you're still here, that means you're a big time nerd. So, welcome to the nerd section. First thing I'm gonna do is get vigor and endurance out of the way. Vigor is simply how much health you have, endurance is your stamina, and your equip load. Second thing I'm gonna do is give you a different way to think about strength and dexterity. Don't take the names of these stats completely to heart. A high strength stat doesn't simply mean your character is stronger and can clap cheeks harder. Likewise, a high dexterity stat doesn't mean your character is going to start sewing sweaters for Christmas like that one milf in Harry Potter. Instead, think of dexterity and strength as descriptions of the weapons you can use. Here's what I mean. Some weapons are dex weapons, while some are strength weapons. Some are even a bit of both. Dex weapons are quicker and do less damage. Strength weapons are slower, but clap harder, and the weapons that are a mix have a mid-speed and mid-damage. Weapons generally adhere to this convention, but there are some exceptions. For example, some dex weapons can be big slow chonkers, like the Bloodhound's Fang, which is extremely sexy by the way. It is in fact so sexy that I made a whole video on it. Okay, but what is a dex or strength weapon? This is just another way of saying a weapon scales with a particular stat. Weapon scaling is a bonus to your damage output awarded to you based on what stats you have. So if a weapon scales with strength, then that weapon gives you bonus damage for every level of strength that you have. Quality or size. Uh. The quality or size of these bonuses are indicated by a letter-based ranking system. So if a weapon has a large bonus for a particular stat, it probably is graded with an S or an A. Now if you're like me, you're jealous of such weapons because you don't get graded with an A too often. Remember when I said improving your damage output is done primarily by upgrading your weapon? This is because a weapon's scaling grade can be improved by upgrading that weapon. This weapon here starts at a D rank in strength, but by the time it's at plus 10, it's a B. So I've talked only about strength and dex so far, but this is because they're your bread and butter when it comes to all weapons, excluding magic, which we'll get into. The other stats, Intelligence, Faith, and Arcane, are seen in melee weapons, but they're always paired up with either Strength or Dex. Here's a Strength Int weapon, here's a Dex Faith weapon, and here's an Arcane Dex weapon. Okay, so now how does stats and scaling work for magic? There's two types of magic, Sorceries and Incantations. Sorcery magic is the one that has you looking like Lucario, shooting big blue balls of energy. If you want to know more, look up Lucario Blue Balls on Google Images. And Incantation Magic is the one that has you healing people and turning water into wine like Jesus. Here's a quick breakdown of the two with what stats and what you use to cast. For both of these, leveling up their respective stats will basically just increase the damage of anything you cast. Alright, so we're actually going to go back to melee combat real quick because I just can't resist talking about clapping someone's dummy thick cheeks. <laughs> Light and heavy attacks can be mixed with one or two hands and different movements and positions. Now I know what that sounds like, but I'm still talking about Elden Ring here. All of these moves together are called a move set. Here's every attack that makes up a move set for any weapon. If two weapons are of the same class, meaning they're both axes or they're both great swords, they'll share the same move set, but with some exceptions. You can dual wield two weapons of the same type, and now you have a whole extra move set. This is for the ones who like double fisting. Ashes of... These things are some of the most sexy and anime moves in the entire game. Basically, an Ash of War is a special move that you can apply to a particular weapon, and they can be swapped in and out as well. Many Ashes of War have a type, for example, magic. You can apply a magic Ash of War to a non-magic weapon. You can also turn that non-magic weapon into a magic weapon by using the magic affinity of that Ash of War. This will add intelligence scaling to the weapon. So if you want to be a magic boy who also uses a dummy thick sword, you're not locked into weapons that already have intelligence scaling. Lastly, don't forget about the Flask of Wondrous Physic. Buffs, 
cures, and throwables. You can craft all of this stuff, and they do come in handy, but if you nail down the core combat, then these are really just supplemental items. Okay, now I'm going to splurge all over you. You can block even without a shield. Two-handing a weapon does not make it do more damage. It increases your strength stat. You can jump and heavy attack on torrent if you jump right before the swing. Graces point to things like dungeons and bosses. Lightning damage is boosted in water. Boss souls can be duplicated at the big walking mausoleums. Ashes of War can be duplicated using Lost Ashes of War. When I was 7 I smashed my left ball under the toilet seat. Try removing the lock on when you feel like it's hard to get away from a boss. Don't dodge through these slam moves, jump over them. When jumping over slam moves, heavy attack in the air. To check out your drip, click the right stick to remove the side menu. If you remove the side menu, you don't have to cancel out of the inventory when you're trying to get a lot of runes. Check boss remembrance weapons. If you don't care about them, use the soul because it's worth a lot of runes. Hip Torch Gang. You can safely fall on jump pads. So you now should be prepared for some hardcore smashing and thrashing. Laying the pipe when the time is ripe. Drilling and filling. Ejaculate! Alright, anyways, if you like this video, please share it with a friend and have a good one.